What's going on, Cedar House? It's so good to be with you guys again today. I'm here, Miss Samantha, with Henley, and we are super excited about this edible plants lesson. Um, it's going to be in two parts, all right? And um, for right now, you're going to hang out with me here at the Cedar House and Henley, and we're going to show you some awesome things on our property of things that we've been looking for and discovering that are edible plants. And then Miss Megan is going to be live at her house and she's going to share with you guys in more detail about each of the plants, their names, and what wonderful um, purposes they have for us, okay? Whether it be to eat or uh, rub on our bodies to heal things, um, we are super, super excited about this lesson. So as you all know, we have been reading Swiss Family Robinson and we have been doing our science lessons based off of the Swiss Family Robinson. And um, so this morning, Henley's gonna do a recap of Swiss Family Robinson uh, for us in just a second. Um, so I hope you guys are still home reading Swiss Family Robinson. We are. Uh, we're on chapter nine. I'm not sure where you guys are, um, but what's so awesome about this story of Swiss Family Robinson is their whole family was stranded on this island. It was just them. And so I want you guys, while you're having some extra special time at home with your parents and your siblings. You're stranded at your house. <laughs> you're kind of stranded at your house. And so they used resources all around them to survive. And so we are going to, um, each week, have a little recap of Swiss Family Robinson and give you guys a challenge whether it be about, um, uh, we're, whether it be that we're studying about the animals from Susan Robinson or the plants, um, we're gonna just do some really exciting lessons. And we have been waiting until spring arrives so we could do edible plants, and it is finally here. So Henley, will you tell us what's been happening so far at Susan Robinson? So Can you look at the, the very first spot, spot was um, they there was a storm and so they got shipwrecked. So they had built some boats out of tubs mm -hmm. and then um, but um, they got a, some of the animal well, they went back to the shore and they had a tent and they brought a lot of stuff so they put up the tent then they went back and got the animals got some animals and they made belts for a, a lot of them and they put corks on the belts and so they could get all the animals over there and then they came back again and they got um, the there was a donkey and a cow, and so they, but they put cans on them and belts, and so they got them on shore. Then um, they went to go do some. They went to go get stuff on the ship, and then they came back and and um. Did they explore? when they were coming back? Um, Fritz harpooned a um, big sea turtle. Whoa. Did they yes. explore the land, the island around them? Yes. What did they, what are some things that they discovered when they explored? Um, they found sugar cane, they found potatoes. Potato plants? Yeah. Okay. They found... What about coconuts? Yes, they found coconuts. They found... They're actually called coconut palms. Oh, coconut palms. All right, good. You're listening. <laughs> okay. Um, and but um, when um, they went to go see, there was this um, um, huge canoe. Okay. So they wanted to get it out. So what they had, so they got gunpowder and they set it right there and they blew up the ship. <laughs> and, but the pinners were still okay. So they went back and went and got it, and then um, then they got on short. But while they were getting the pinners, um, the, um, the mom and the youngest, Ernest, no, not Ernest. Fritz? No. I can't remember his name, his name, but they found... A place and then they all went and then they built their nest. Okay. And then and then they found potato plants. They had um 
What about, what was that plant that they found that had wax on um, it? Do you remember the name of it? Waxberry. It's a waxberry. What did they make from the waxberry plant? Um, they made candles and and then um, they found out there was a beehive. Oh yeah, so did they get some honey? They got stung by the <laughs> kids because they tried to, uh, um, they tried to do something but then they all got stung. Can you say that they had some really awesome adventures? Yeah. Did they find shelter or did they create and make shelter for themselves? Yes. Were they able to eat and survive on the yes. food that they found around them? Yes. And then, well, the, um, they went through the, the winter and then um, they went and they went, they went to Tentham and... What's Tentham? That's the tent, but they used to stay there, but now they just keep stuff. A lot of things were like gone and destroyed and then they went to the mountainside and started um, trying, they wanted to make a storage spot. So they started hatcheting at it and then Jack, um, um, he lost a crowbar because they found a chasm um, in the wall and so um, but it was poisonous air because it had been trapped in there for so long. So this is a cave that they, yeah. they, they discovered, okay. Yeah, because they were hacking and it mm -hmm. was only like, a, probably about that big. And so there wasn't enough oxygen to breathe, so it's poisonous no, air? It, no, it was, okay. it had been trapped up so long that um, it became poisonous. Oh, okay, all right, so what and, did they do to solve that problem? Um, they put hay in there and they burned it, but it didn't work because they um you had to have had more air so i mean more fire so um they got these um help rockets these um what are they called um signal rockets oh, oh okay and they <laughs> launched them in there and it went all in there and it locked and it knocked down a few um stalagmites but um to make sure uh, well, the dad um, found out that it was a salt um, crystal cave. So cool. Okay. And then, um, but they had seen see they had seen that they had fell down, so they fired some gunshots to make sure none of them were loose. Well, that is such a great recap. Thank you, Henley. That was awesome. You are really paying attention to that story, and it is hard to understand everything in that story. Sometimes I have to ask Henley. What are they talking about? It's very technical, but it's pretty awesome. And we are learning so much about the resources that God has given us from the Swiss Family Robinson story. If you're just tuning in with us, Henley and I were just uh, recapping Swiss Family Robinson. Uh, our science lessons are coming from this story that the Cedar House kids have been reading. And we're on chapter nine right now. And today we are going to talk about edible plants. They discovered so many plants that they could survive on on the island they were living in, uh, living on uh, in Swiss Family Robinson. And so I want to read a scripture to you right now um, from God's Word about the plants that He has given us before we start on our journey on finding all the edible plants here at the Cedar House. So the first one is from Psalm, okay? Mama, here's poison ivy. Huh? Here's some poison ivy. Okay, hold on. Yeah, hold on just a second. Oh, whew. Ooh, I thought I'd lost it. Okay, the first one is from Psalm. Psalm 104, 14. You cause the grass to grow for the livestock and plants for man to cultivate that he may bring forth food from the earth. And then a, uh, another one is Genesis 9, 3. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. God is so amazing. Thank you, Lord, for all the amazing uh, plants and animals that you put on this earth for us to survive and, 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 and enjoy. And so here we go. Um, this part one, Henley and I are going to be going on the Cedar House property, and we're going to look and find some edible plants that we have been researching. And then part two, right after you just stay online, Miss Megan is going to be at her house, and she is going to teach us in more detail about these specific plants. I cannot wait. Okay, so Henley has discovered over here, we are over in the, you're in out the, you're in the we're in the outdoor classroom area, and um, over here, Henley, show them what you found. 
Can you tell them what it is? We found some wild onions. These right here are wild onions. Look right here, and we're going to label them and stick them here, but Henley's going to pull one up. As you can see, I know you can't smell, but whoo, it smells very oniony over here. Very oniony. So right here, Henley's pulling one up one. These normally flower. They haven't flowered yet, and these are things that you can find in your own very backyard, okay? Here's two that got show, stuck show together. These are wild onions. So, can we eat these, Henley? We've been looking and researching. Can we eat these? Yep. We can? So, um, one, thing, one thing I want to say that I forgot to begin with, for us to know about edible plants and going and looking for plants on your property, in your yard. Is never to eat them. Well, first, before you touch specific plants or put them in your mouth, you want to make sure for sure that they are edible or something that you can touch because some plants are poisonous, okay? And they look like this. And it's sometimes hard to identify certain plants. And so we encourage you, and Miss Megan's gonna encourage you as well, to go with your parents and check and make sure that it is something you can put in your mouth first, okay? All right, and also you always wanna wash it really well because you never know if someone has put insecticide or put poison on plants to kill certain things or fertilizers. Um, I don't know, your dog may have gone to the restroom on it. Who knows? You wanna make sure you wash it really well before you eat it. But wild onions, for sure, is a definite yummy treat that you guys, and I heard Miss Mary, Miss Mary, our squirrel teacher, she actually used some wild onions to put it on the top of their pizza. And um, it was for Charlie's birthday and he loved it. He said it was very yummy. So I encourage you guys to go find some wild onions and also look for them to flower because this blossom right here is gonna flower. And Miss Megan's gonna teach you all about wild onions soon, okay? So we're gonna put our label here. But by the way, you might wanna pull off the tip of the onion and take off the roots. Okay, so we're gonna go this way. Um, and we are going to look for some other plants that we have here at the Cedar House. Um, I've been looking and, and, and discovering new things, and I'm super, 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 super excited. There's some more wild onions right here. Yeah, wild onions are everywhere. I want to show y'all something right here. Actually, we forgot to go get us a wild onion to put in our basket. We're going to collect some of these onions. So here is another word for you guys. Doc. Can you say doc? I have found some doc plants and there's different varieties of doc. And this is one. Doc is similar to chard, Swiss chard or kale. And uh, Miss Megan's going to tell you all about it. But this is one right here, Mr. Chad, if you want to look at this, Henley. This is called doc. Okay? Doc. It's a broad leaf doc. Uh, yeah, there's different kinds, and this one has a little purple tint to it, but when we walk a little further, I'll show you. But these, you're supposed to be able to put in some salads, especially when the, young, the leaves are young. Like this one is a young leaf. Will you move? This is a young leaf right here, but this one right here is a little older. Henley, you want to feel the touch, like the difference in the texture and explain it to yeah, them? Yeah, this is a broad leaf and this no, is... No, 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 it's the same plant, but what's the difference in the texture of the two? This is less sandpapery and it's more bendy this is more broad and yeah this one's more soft and that so these younger leaves are a lot are supposed to be really really good you can like taste it right now and like just eat it <clears throat> so we're going to grab a couple of these because Henley and I are going to do some experimenting with some of our plants and also the roots supposed to be really really good and I dug up a root the other day and it's super thick or whatever and Miss Megan's got one at her house that she's going to show you guys all right, so moving along, we're gonna show you some more. Here's some more wild onions. This is where a lot of them are. Oh, here's some Indian pizza pizza. So guys, this is not an edible plant, but we were super no, excited. No, they actually are, because look, Okay. If you, there's little pink things that have white at the bottom, not the petals, but they're like these pink things, and you pull the inside out, and it looks like, it looks really gross, but if you pull it out, 
You suck it and there's nectar. Henley really loves to snack on these and we were super excited. Two days ago, we had no Indian paintbrushes and then all of a sudden they popped out. They were so bright and beautiful. And so we're saving mowing a little while. We're holding off mowing a little bit longer so that we can let these Indian paintbrushes sprout because we love to pick them and we love to see them. So I wanted to show you mm. Cedar House Kids. This is not on our edible plant list, although Henley does love it for a snack. There's some Indian paintbrushes growing here. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're moving right along. There's some more wild onions. There are wild onions everywhere. We mean everywhere. So we put some flags around so that Mr. Chad would know the areas that we don't want him to mow right now because we were looking and discovering um, all sorts of wonderful things. But I do want you to be careful whenever you're next to hedges, um, probably not in your yard, there's probably not a lot of poison ivy, but if you live in the country, you need to pay attention. I'm trying to wrap something together. Can you step over to the side, please? Oh, if you're living in the, hold on just a second. If you're living in the country, you wanna pay attention to make sure that you're not in poison ivy, okay? Um, and I have to be super careful about that because I am a little allergic. So Mr. Chad, if you'll come in closer. Um, right here is a very, very interesting plant, and it's called a common corn salad. <laughs> Sorry, it's probably too bright to read. Common corn salad, and that's this plant right here. It's not corn. Actually, it's this one right here. Can you see it, Mr. Chad? It's not corn, though. It is not corn, but it's common corn salad, and they use these little leaves in salads, and actually the French cooks use it as well, and Miss Megan's gonna tell you way more about that. But it has these little white flowers on the top, and I bet you probably have some in your yard. But look how many of these we have, and they're all over, they're everywhere. We could make salad for the whole, whole Hunt County. <laughs> it's super awesome, but the common corn salad didn't really have a smell, but you're supposed to be able to eat these leaves and put them in salad, so super great. We also have right here, they're called, um, bram is it brambles, Henley? Actually, yeah. I'm gonna put these in our little basket so we can use them for later. What's our Are they brambles? Mm -mm. These right here are not gonna be on our list as far as we're gonna study just now. We're gonna come back and study these in a couple of weeks. But right here where these white flowers are, this is a bramble, okay? Now these brambles, they're flowering and they're gonna have red little berries on them. But we see these, and you might, if you live in the country, see these everywhere. But this is so cool. And, and Mr. Chad, if you can look at all the little white dots everywhere, they've, we've got them all in the edges, a whole lot of different places. But it's gonna be a little red berry and I cannot wait to taste it. But they're called brambles. Oh, rose brambles, that's it. Rose do taste, brambles. Do they taste good? I don't know. I've never had them. I never really realized okay. we had them here. Are they edible? So look, stay tuned in a couple of weeks and we will show you when the berries start to sprout. Usually when they're flowering, I think that means they're coming soon. Okay. So here is another dock. I told you I'd show you a different kind. Now look here. Miss Samantha has to be extra careful because right here, that is poison ivy or poison oak. Sometimes I get confused between the two, but it's right there and right there. And this is what I want to show you right here. And then there's some more over there. So I've got to be super careful. And there's some right there. But right here is another dock plant. Do you see the difference between the two varieties? Those leaves are way bigger. Only because the other dock was smaller. The broad leaf dock was smaller. Mm -hmm. So that's super exciting, okay? But the rod leaf dock does get that big. It's just it isn't fully grown. Well, I don't know. I have to just keep watching them and pay attention. So I have two more edible plants that I want to show you. And uh, the stage is still here, guys. <laughs> it's a little messy, but um, still here. So right here is an awesome plant. It's an awesome plant. 
No, this is not. This is not poisonous, I promise. This is called a yarrow. Yarrow. Whoop. Yarrow. Can you say yarrow? Yarrow. Mm -hmm. So the yarrow, it's supposed to flower. And I don't know if mine are going to be a common yarrow, which is white flowers, or um, one that has yellow flowers, okay? I'm not certain, but I've heard that, no, for one, yarrow plants are supposed to be very, very medicinal for your liver. Miss Megan's going to teach you about it um, in just a little bit, but here is the yarrow plant, and it hasn't flowered yet, so I'm super excited to watch these, but look how many I have, and I've seen them other places. They're over here, right here. And too. they look a little bit like a fern. They're not prickly to the touch. They're soft. What are other ferns? They just smell like a green plant. So anyway, um, I'm super, super excited about this yarrow. Um, we might can make a tea out of it. We're gonna look and research, but Miss Megan is gonna tell us what we do with the yarrow. So there's the yarrow plant. And right over here, we're gonna show you super something exciting. Well, she's not gonna teach about this. So we flagged right over here. We found several dewberry vines. Which is black, wild blackberries. Right here, and they are very prickly. If you've ever picked dewberries, you wanna wear gloves because whew, they're prickly. But these are gonna flower, and sometimes towards the end of May is when, they, when they're, they're ready. And they're black little berries, but they're dewberries. You can make pies. We love to go blackberry picking or dewberry picking, and we Usually were super excited. Usually I don't get as much as my mom because I eat all of mine. We were super, super, super excited to find that we had some on our property, and so we're gonna let them grow. We're not gonna mow them down, and we are gonna pick some, and so we will make sure that we share that with you guys when it's time for picking dewberries, okay? So, um, the last spot we have is over here by the pond. And so as we walk over here to the pond, I'm going to share with you about our challenge that we have. Okay? It's called a boat challenge. <laughs> no, it's not our boat challenge. As we're walking to the pond, I'm going to share with you about our boat challenge. Our <laughs> family just said boat challenge. About the Swiss Family Robinson challenge that we have for you this week. What we want you to do is we want you to go out in your yard and see if you can discover or find any of these plants that we've been talking about, okay? And then make something with your parents with one of the items. Or if you're really excited about edible plants, you can find a new, a new plant that we haven't mentioned here today in your yard and tell us all about it, okay? And so you can send us a picture or a video or whatever you want of you guys and you know your family getting together and another, making something out of one of these edible here's plants. A, here's um, a broadleaf duck. It just hasn't gone. It just hasn't gotten. It all has small leaves. Yeah, I've seen a lot of different kinds of docks over here, and it's super exciting. Here's the uh, here's another broadleaf dock. And yeah, we've got them all another. over. These these docks are all over. It's super exciting. And guess what? They haven't bloomed yet, but I found some honeysuckle. You know the area where you guys go build forts back in the creek tree area? Well, we're gonna go this way, Kimberly. There happens to be honeysuckle there. It's okay. I found some honeysuckle vines, and they haven't bloomed yet, but when they bloom, they smell so beautiful. So I am super, super, super excited about that. So the last thing that we're gonna look at is called willow bark. Okay, and if you remember, our pond has these trees over here, and they are willow trees, okay? And they produce aspirin. That's where you get aspirin, right? You get aspirin in the So right over here is our willow tree. It's blooming right now, as you can see, it has the little fuzzy things that will fall off and then turn into, oh my goodness, y'all look, this bee. The bees like this, the, the nectar on this willow. This, we have, this is called a black willow. 
Oh my goodness, how fun is that? Our pond would overflow if eaten, we didn't. Oh, y'all look, if you look, Mr. Chad, look real close. You can see the pollen on this bee's little legs. Can you see it? I can. It is. I hope you can see this, but there is pollen on his little legs. How exciting. Okay. Can y'all see it now? Okay. So this is a willow bark tree and Henley is <laughs> testing it out. Cause it has aspirin in it. So uh, they say that the willow, if you, if you need some aspirin, um, then you can nibble a little bit on the bark and it, it, it acts as um, a pain reliever, <laughs> pain reducer like aspirin. But if you are, Miss Megan's gonna tell you a lot more about it, so be very careful when you do that. But here's the bark of the tree and the branches, and we've got many of these out here. And that's what keeps our pond from overflowing. Yes. So anyway, I'm super, super excited about you guys listening to Miss Megan's talk about edible plants. Stay online, or if you're watching this at a different time and it's not live, then make sure you watch part two, Edible Plants, because Miss Megan is in detail. She's going to describe to you guys, she's gonna show you the parts of the plants, exactly what you use them for, what you eat, like why, if you eat them in a salad or if you use it as a medicinal purpose. So I'm super excited. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I miss you guys. You guys are awesome. Remember the challenge, go out in your yard and see if you can find any of these plants and make something with your parents or find a new plant that we haven't discussed, okay? See you soon.